I went my whole childhood thinking that the dinosaur Giganotosaurus was actually pronounced Gigantosaurus just because I misread it, and now I just feel stupid. Welcome to Rumble Book Club. I'm your host, Michael Hernandez, and this is the show where a normal guy like me can talk about cool books I read, all the new, good, and bad. So if you like the show, you like the books that I talk about, then subscribe right down below and hit that little bell, too, to let you know when the next video comes out. All right, today we get to go back to my old childhood passion, which is dinosaurs. We're going to talk about a really, really cool book that I just finished reading today, and I'm really excited that I did. Today we're going to take a look at The Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs by Steve Brasati. Brasati is a paleontologist at the University of Edinburgh. This book was written in 2018, and I'm actually really ashamed of myself that I bought it in 2018 and didn't even get around to reading it until today, so that chalked that up as a loss for old Mike there. This book details the climb of the dinosaurs through the Triassic period, through the Jurassic period, and the Cretaceous, and even the, a little bit about what the conditions of the world were like le leading up to that period of time, the massive catastrophic event that cued the rise of the dinosaurs going into the Triassic, their rise to pure t uh, dominance and power uh, throughout the late Triassic, uh, throughout all of the Jurassic, and then the rise of some of the most well-known dinosaurs, such as Tyrannosaurus rex and Triceratops, Triceratops, moving into the late Cretaceous period. So let's take a look at the aesthetics. I love this cover. It's got this real old-time font here, and this beautiful artist rendition of well, what I would imagine is a Cretaceous period landscape, because it's got Tyrannosaurus here. It's got maybe one of the smaller, um, uh, smaller long-necked dinosaurs here. And uh, you can see mostly Cretaceous era dinosaurs. And then you can see up close, what I really love is that you can tell it's a modern depiction of, of uh, dinosaurs because you can see kind of the filaments of uh, early feathers right there on Tyrannosaurus. And you see a little bit there on our friend here. And uh, that, that's something that's, it's not exactly a new development, but it is something that over time more and more of the scientific community believes that, that dinosaurs had was, was early feathers. Uh, that relationship between dinosaurs and birds has become more and more clear as the decades have gone on. Now moving on to the readability. So uh, Brusati has a really good, real clear, uh, kind of poppy way of writing. It, it's very fun. It's got good an uh, antidotes in it. He's got good, uh, great stories. He's got a little bit of humor. He's got re um, relatability. He's able to take these very old uh, scenes from the Triassic, the Cretaceous, um, all these prehistoric landscapes and uh, animals and different creatures that we have almost no relation to. And he's able to bring modern day concepts and modern day animals that we do see that we do understand and is able to make that connection he has a good photo bank of all different kinds of photos that that definitely help to elaborate on the points and the stories that he tells and then the font is also very big text is is very clear so it makes for an easy read on your eyes and it's also very very smooth reading just intellectually uh, although you do learn in a, an amazing amount from this book so as far as the readability goes i'm going to give it a perfect score 10 out of 10. Now let's look at the content. Brusati gives us 350 pages chock full of not just information, but passion. He, you could tell that from his writing. You can tell from his journey how excited he gets about finding even the smallest raptor tooth or Tyrannosaurus hip bone. Whatever he finds, you can see his, his detailed passion and energy for his field. And that really reinvigorates whatever passion you had for dinosaurs as a child. I know as a kid, I personally loved dinosaurs. I loved reading them. I read every kid's book I can get my hands on. As you read this book, it really brings that back. It brings back that love for this prehistoric era. And another thing it really brings back is your excitement that these were real animals. These weren't just these these fairy tale creatures of uh, these fairy tale dragons and unicorns that we tell stories about but we know don't exist. These were real animals. They they lived, they breathed, they ate, they fed, they mated, they did all the things that we recognize in the the world of animals that that we see and experience in the world today. Brusati takes a step by step going from the earliest days of dinosaurs to where they weren't even technically dinosaurs. And then there's this blurred line where they were called, I believe, dinosaur morphs is the the correct term, where they had most of the elements of dinosaurs but weren't quite there. Their rise to to at least existence around l much larger, much more threatening animals and bigger rep reptiles that technically ruled the, world, ruled the earth at the time. The cataclysmic events that killed off a vast majority of those dominant species and allowed the dinosaurs, the foot room, particularly the herbivores at first, to start getting, uh, getting their, their foot in the door 
to kind of get world dominance. At this time, the world was made up of a supercontinent called Pangaea. And throughout the entire course of the dinosaurs' rise to power and eventually their fall, at all the while, the continents were slowly breaking apart. We were seeing this rift down the middle and then from, from uh, east to west and then from north to south as things were slowly starting to split into the world we see today. He details a lot of the different unique parts of the dinosaur's body, particularly the dinosaurs such as brachiosaurs, uh, how they were able to grow to these insane sizes, sizes that we've never seen before or pro probably since and, and most likely never will. Through the Jurassic period, we started seeing these large carnivores start to grow and grow and grow, and we see the fruition of that in the Cretaceous period when the family called Tyrannosaurs, which were closely related to, to earlier large meat-eating predators such as Allosaurus, but we start, started seeing their fruition into dinosaurs such as Giganotosaurus, Tyrannosaurus rex that were much more massive in their size, but also unique in their brain capacity, what they were able to do as effective killers, not just physically, but also mentally and through their sensory. One of the things I really admire about Brasati is that he was able to really light that fire for Tyrannosaurus Rex again. Now, everybody knows Tyrannosaurus Rex. T-Rex uh, is honestly like the Babe Ruth of dinosaurs. You can have your favorite dinosaur, whatever it may be, but you know, you immediately recognize Tyrannosaurus in its shape and its form, in the, the, the roar that you hear in cinema. Anyway, he dedicates just an entire chapter to the Tyrannosaurus family, and just that alone makes this entire book worth reading, although every single page is absolutely magnificent. The chapter on T-Rex, I think, is just pure gold. You learn the ins and outs of what made the Tyrannosaurus Rex such an effective predator, not just in its size, which was in itself impressive. It was the largest uh, carnivorous land animal that's ever existed in, in Earth history and probably ever will. You also learn about its unique sensory features that allowed Tyrannosaurus to be such an effective hunting and killing machine, whether it was the much larger eyes that allowed binocular vision, which was something almost entirely unique to Tyrannosaurus, and also uh, different lines of raptors such as Velociraptor and Deinonychus, binocular vision, the ability to see depth in planes. The bones of the ear canal of the T-Rex also indicate that its hearing was uh, able to detect low frequency sounds, which is also something very unique to Tyrannosaurus Rex. When you move down into the chest cavity where the lungs are, different details in the bone structure show that uh, the T-Rex had lungs very similar to birds, which allowed them to take in oxygen, not, to, not just when they breathe in, but also it allowed reserve oxygen to stay there as they exhale and continue to oxygenate the body and provide that, that nutrient dense, that, that oxygen rich blood to the body as the thing was exhaling. So it's constantly receiving oxygen, which allowed, allowed it to have much stronger and longer bursts of energy and endurance. Another cool thing that Brusati is able to debunk from a lot of Hollywood depictions of Tyrannosaurus is actually the intelligence of these animals. When they compare the size of the brain cavity, in comparison to the bulk of the dinosaur, and they were able to average that out across different, not just extinct, but also living animals, including humans and dolphins and primates, they found that the Tyrannosaurus brain cavity indicates that its rough intelligence level would have actually been higher than primates. It would have been somewhere between primates and dolphins, which shows that this wasn't just a dumb brute that charged kind of brainlessly through the jungle looking for easy prey. This was something that was capable of coordinating, possibly even in a pack, because the fossils show that it did actually move potentially in groups. But it was able to actually coordinate attacks similar to how Jurassic Park um, seems to imply that raptors behaved, and most likely raptors did, but tyrannosaurs were actually in that, that uh, pack hunter style of, of animal. And one last cool detail about the tyrannosaurs, their skull was also inherently unique. The tyrannosaurus rex had a skull that w where the bones were much more fused to together, capable of withstanding a lot of pressure. And when they've simulated, not just from the size of the... Uh, cavities on the jaw where muscles, jaw muscles would uh, attach to the bone. And they've been able to map together what its rough musculature in, in the, the jaw would be. They, When engineers and paleontologists 
uh, tested the jaw strength of just a single tooth, just a single tooth capable of piercing the bone, they found that just the, the pressure for force from one Tyrannosaur tooth would issue over 3,000 pounds of bite force. And that's just from one indicated bite mark on the bone of a, tri uh, of a prehistoric Triceratops, which indicates not only that the bite force could have been even higher than 3,000 per tooth, but that's also, again, just one part of the mouth. If you multiplied that through the entire force of the entire mouth as it comes down, this was a creature that could have crushed a car with its jaw. It could have bitten through even the strongest thigh and femur bones of just about any animal alive or even in the past. Tyrannosaurs had what was called a puncture pull bites capable of crunching through bone and then pulling out animals such as hyenas and possibly even sharks somewhat have that capability but tyrannosaur really perfected it millions of years before hyenas even existed honestly i can spend all day gushing about just how amazing this work is how great this book is but we're going to stop here for the content so as far as the content goes this is a perfect score 10 out of 10. I found this book at Barnes & Noble. You can find it there too. You can also find it on Amazon if need be. This is an incredible book. I can spend all day talking about it, but we're going to go ahead and wrap this thing up. So the book is The Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs by Steve Brusati. Go out and get yourself a copy. Thanks for watching, everybody. Go read something. Sometimes I feel close to the edge again. Like my is gone now no cause burning with it hey rbc fans if you want to support the show in our mission to share great works of writing with the world scan the barcode to make a generous donation and if you donate fifty dollars or more and leave a book title in our comments i'll even feature your book choice on our next episode